Okay, ready? Uh, Wait, so they can hear you now? That was on purpose, wasn't it? That was on purpose, wasn't it? Wait, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, I see your mouth moving. I don't hear you. R no, I'm... Are you joking with me? <laughs> yes, you are. Okay, great. No, I... What, can you hear me? I don't hear you at all, but okay. What? I wonder if it's because you guys are just messing with me. No. Can you hear me? Or we got more problems now because... Uh, you can't hear me now? I'm not hearing you guys at all. <laughs> oh, my... Sir Jaziel, can you hear me though? I can hear you, Solomon. Okay. Oh my word. So, so <laughs> are we on the show? You can hear me? What's going on, dude? This isn't going to work. What? What? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for some good old MMO news. And we do each week at 6 p.m. Pacific time, assuming we're on time, on the Coffee and RPG Network. As always, in, we have Sir Jaziel in the house. <sighs> And Solomon SK, our resident YouTube and <laughs> owner of Coffee Not PG. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, he's dying over there. And resident coffer. And <sighs> obviously me, Kenneth. Uh, so welcome. We're glad you're here. We aim each week to bring entertainment, joy, happiness, hope, love, and bring some top picks and opinions on the world of MMOs since we are fans of MMOs and also players too. Well, I know Jaziel and I are players. Sorry. That was a, that was a low blow. <laughs> Some dad you are. I wanted, I wanted Solomon to play ESO. That's why, you know. So, but now we're moving on from ESO right now. Okay. I mean, yeah. He's got the Rona. Well, he's coughing. I, you know, oh no, California. Oh, please no, don't say that I word. This this why. is gonna go on YouTube. We can tell oh. you why we're coughing over here in California because oh, yeah. <clears> there's smoke. nothing but smoke yeah. everywhere. It's That's all orange. It's all orange outside. When I take this road trip, I'm going to go to Colorado. There's fires in Colorado. Yep. Um, and I'm going to go to California, and there's fires in California. So, wow, I'm leaving my nice, glorious, beautiful weather state of Washington and going to where the fires are at. You know? I'm sorry. I didn't start it. I all didn't right. start, didn't start the, fire. the fire. The world. <laughs> no idea what that song is. The world is turning. What? You sing along. Come on. You know the yeah. song, dude. I have no you idea know. what song you're talking about. Oh, yeah, right. Come on. Legit. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's time to start off our daily quest where I lead you off on some easy <laughs> adventures and quests. You throw all got to your dailies because that's how you level up your other stuff. Okay. So, anyways, New World. That's mm -hmm. right. New World. Put the banner up here, right? If we had the launch party. Next week is the launch party of New World. We are going to get our launch party because we're going to do New World. Um, the old closed beta, you might say, is is on August twenty fifth, um, and it's a they call it a preview event. So if you happen to pre happen to be on the alpha, you happen to be a content creator, and you happen to be uh, pre ordered the game on Amazon or wherever you're at your Steam on July 9th, you get the invitation to come to the pre the pre event. It starts August twenty fifth at nine a.m. Pacific time, and it runs until midnight. Their time on September 4th. So that's what's going to happen. Alexa, 11.59. And so you don't figure out or freak out as if it's not the third and the fourth. Yeah, whatever game. So um, what is kind of cool is um, there are, because of that, you know, I now have two codes. You know, so I offered one of those codes to my son <clears throat> so he can play, get yeah, try it out because he's a big MMO player. So uh, are you guys, are you guys got your codes yet? Sure did. Uh, I got one of them. That's so, enough, thanks to Jafar and the fact that we have been content creators are known by Amazon Game Studios, uh, we got ourselves a little swag, a creator content swag box, okay? So I thought I would just share. I've already opened it, okay? I'll share that they have this cool hat. Okay. <laughs> you got a Grubhub. Grubhub ten dollar card. I think it's ten dollars. You get a nice little content creator little thing, right? Uh, you get some um, coveting <laughs> New World uh, uh, hand sanitizers. Don't worry, skill. Don't worry, guys. Gaming skills don't run in the family. <laughs> wow, I've just been dissed. <laughs> right, and what's kind of cool is this. Okay, this is the last thing on here. <clears throat> Not a T-shirt. 
some people might have thought, but something different. Wow, it's big enough to hold all that beard. <laughs> no shadow. There is no New World condom in the package. <laughs> hey, man. Where's the protection? Wow, he looks 20 years younger. <laughs> there you go. And that's the swag. So the box is otherwise got a lot of stuffing in here. Oh, oh that was good. Here. Sorry. It's a, really, it's a really nice box, too. It's got nice... Uh, I'll work too, you know. So Wait. It's magnet, so anyways, there you go. That's what the that's what the box is in. That's what they came in. So it's pretty kind of cool. I know Jafar will be opening his box tomorrow on stream. Well, I'll call him Mr. Swag. Thank you, Puga. So uh yeah, so August 25th, next Tuesday at, at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Even though the even though the show, the game will already open, you'll find us. Broadcasting and streaming an hour-long launch party, talking about the game, our expectations, our thoughts on it, what we've been through so far, so that we now can talk about it, for those who had the NDA lifted. And then we're going to talk about what we're going to do, what characters we're going to create, and jump in. Join us for the adventure. And we're going to group up, and we're going to you know, adventure into this world. And then until we get a chance to say goodbye, uh, we'll do this. Now, mind you, I'm going on vacation coming up, so I probably won't feel a chance to play as much as others you know yep i'm gonna rob the new world bank that's what i'm gonna do so that's new world so uh and what's interesting is that the story that's coming up right now was the fact that you know um those of us like sarzio and i who are in the alpha we have been also getting um emails and things about other stuff like you pre-order it you get your actual game code okay from amazon you know um, we, because working with Jafar, Jafar, getting another code from a company that seems to be tied with New World, even though it doesn't say Amazon, Amazon Games Radio. It's one of those things where it kind of freaked me out a little bit, but it all goes through the Viathan core and then to Arsenal.gg, which is, I thought was interesting. So I now have two codes. So uh, Jafar, I think, sorry, not Jafar, just heal. You haven't got your two codes yet, have you? Or did you get one at least? <clears throat> I got my pre-order code, but not the content creator code. Okay. But, but uh, I've already in downloaded and installed, and it lets me in. So there's yeah. no server. Uh, let me rephrase that. <laughs> there are no servers online, so it, it lets me log into the game, but there I can't play the game. Right. Right. Okay, Solomon's turn. <laughs> Solomon, did you get a code yet? Yeah, I already have the game installed. Okay. Yeah, so we have it. We're set. Now, mind you, again, I think I said I got two codes now. One worked. And the one I'm sure is going to work. I'll get to my son so he can try it out, too, because he is an MMO player, even though he says gaming skills don't run in the family. You realize, of course, that's, a, that's not him saying that my skills transferred to him. That's impossible. That my lack of skills did not transfer to him. That's impossible. He's half Korean. That it, it's like that doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, I'm saying that's for it. He's got the half the half Caucasian side of him. Didn't, you know. All right. So, um, so that's half really true. ESO. ESO does have their latest um, their latest uh, upcoming thing coming. I forget what it's called. Okay, the next story part of the chapter for Graymore uh, is coming out. Get when it is, but top DPS baby. Yep. And healer too is good healer too. Wow, Shadowlands is coming closer and closer. We do know that Raziel has decided to abandon uh, me into the realm of WoW again. <laughs> oh, he's doing no, no, that. No. That's not what happened. Okay, <laughs> that we were supposed to do this after New World, but he's already back in again. Go find him. Go watch him on his streams. He's been hanging out with the the crazy sisters. I was going to call oh, him yeah. that one time, but I decided not to. But the crazy sisters. On the diminished expectations, both on the Proudmore server for Lions and the Bleeding Hollow for Horde. All right. And by the way, the apparently uh, the Classic decided to de-layer their servers, and those who are playing Classic have seen their queue times return. So I'm not sure what's going on there. They must have felt enough people have left the game to de-layer them, but interesting. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV, for those who love the game, including Lurker, the latest story, the latest patch is out, and everyone's enjoying it. Story, once again, is a winner by those who play the game. And the last thing I had on there was Ashes of Creation, 
they decided to to drop their publisher and self publish themselves. Now, hopefully, that's not going to be a big deal. It's not going to cause any great issues, okay? But you never can tell, okay? So they no, said it no, was Emma. Emma. <laughs> What's the word? M M amicably amic ugh. amicable. What about it? The 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 separation between uh, Ashes of Creation and My Dot Games. I thought I saw it was amicable. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what that's what I was trying to say. I can't I can't pronounce it because I can't English. That's the way they worded it. Okay, it's just so business, that's... nothing personal. So, anything on those things you guys want to chat about? Those dailies. No, well, other than the fact that uh, Ashes of Creation is looking really awesome, I have to admit. Yeah. Yeah. All right, it, we're done with dailies. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say uh, a, a lot of people are really looking forward to Ashes of Creation. It's uh, getting a lot of applause right now. Man, I I really hope they make a battle royale mode. That would be something. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. Okay. It we worked. Needed to the, to the <laughs> they, well, the thing is, they said that battle royale uncovered things they needed to uncover. So they have no regrets doing it. Even though I know a lot of the people who paid the Kickstarter for that were like, "What the heck? I want the game." Like, well, don't you want a good game? Well, yeah. Then this is the way to do it. You know. I guess. All right. We are done with our dailies. Hopefully, you guys are you started off the day early. Well, easy quest. Now we're going to jump into the delivery quest. So we're going to have Solomon and Jazil do that because they're going to deliver some good old things that I forgot about or did not know about or just what they think is the top things on their list. So we'll start with Jazil. What do you have today? Uh, not much, really. I'm still... There, there's been a lot of speculation on, um, or further speculation, I should say, on Shadowlands for World of Warcraft. Um, but it's kind of uh, still, uh, nothing's really changed from what I said last week, that even with uh, other people claiming that they know more than what the general audience does, um, I, I don't really listen to that too much because it usually turns out that's not true. Um, it's just more taking previous experience of how Blizzard Activision has done things and kind of crunching the numbers. And and um, most people are still saying that within probably the next, I would say, four to six weeks, um, probably closer to four to five weeks, actually, I think we will see beta <laughs> being released. Uh, and... Um, or not uh, closed beta, but open beta. And uh, I believe that there will be more on the PTR. I do know that the PTR, they they um, took off the week one and week two of what's going to be in the pre-launch. So that's no longer there. Um, again, there was a little bit of speculation. Some people were assuming that was because there were a lot of complaints. Um, I don't think that's why they took that off. Um, like I said last week, the, a lot of that had to do with those of us who were in the Wrath of the Lich King era um, and more so before Wrath of the Lich King came out. There was an event where um, people were able to infect each other and would become undead and you'd go around and infect other people. And uh, I, I don't think that's what happened because actually a lot of the other streamers and gamers that I talked to that were doing it were enjoying it. Uh, I was I thought it, I loved it. It was fun running around and infecting other people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm a sick guy, but I liked it. I thought it was fun. I didn't mind at all. Um, but that's been pulled out of the game, out of the PTR, I should say now, oh, okay. which um to me, if I was going to speculate on anything, it would be that that's coming really soon within the next few weeks um, and that they tested it out. It's working good. They're going to implement it. Um, that's mm. what I'm getting out of it. But I could be wrong, uh, but I'm pretty solidly saying that late fall um, we're going to we're going to be getting the game. Mm. Um, definitely. I. I think we're going to have Shadowlands before Thanksgiving. It, okay. It's a guess. It's an educated guess. 
and it's also hopeful thinking, but wishful <laughs> thinking. Yeah. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, there is. Uh, there are some folks that um, are really looking forward to um, the. You know what? My mind is blanking out on what that's called. Something thorn. Uh, Stone thorn. Shit. Stone thorn. Right. Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, no. We're getting the next chapter in yeah. that, which is going to be really cool. Uh, I really enjoyed the first part of the story. Um, now, I, I know, as Kenneth said, a lot of people think I've left ESO. <laughs> I, not, I am still playing both. I play ESO yes, yes, and just... World of Warcraft. Is that making me go crazy and lose a little bit more hair? Well, <laughs> look at the top here. Yes. Um, <laughs> Um, it, it's crazy playing two MMOs. I will tell you that, but it's true. Uh, I, I'm doing it. Um, I have not left ESO. I am still playing it. Uh, I did go back to World of Warcraft a little bit early at, at the urging of, um, as he was saying, the crazy sisters, uh, Reina and Eva. I, I decided to go ahead and go get back in there. Uh, Colby as well was, was practically on his knees begging me to come back early. Um, but I'm still, these guys with me here, we're still going to do our launch party and we're still going to um, adventure. I'm still very willing to create a new character because, as you know, um, oh, that was the other thing I wanted to talk about, is there has been confirmation that pre-launch for Shadowlands, we are indeed getting the number crunches. We're getting the statistic uh, oh, right. or stats yeah. um, crunched. We are getting the level That's crunch. Weird. The new um, leveling system is being put in place for pre-launch as That's well. Right. So you will be from level one to 10, you will be in the new starting area, which I played on the PTR. And let me tell you, it is pretty awesome at teaching you the ropes, how to play the game. Um, I I believe it's light years better than... than um, anything that they've had in the in the past as far as teaching people who are completely new to MMOs, I think they'll be able to easily get the game and get the basics. And um, it, it's it's a pretty cool little adventure as well. And then, of course, you know, level 10 through level 50, you get to choose your own adventure. Uh, whatever expansion, if you want to do Wrath of Lich King, you can do that. If you want to do the Burning Crusade or... God forbid, Warlords of Draenor. I don't know why you would pick that. Maybe you're a little nuts and need medication. Um, <laughs> or uh, Battle for Azeroth. I believe you have to do Battle for Azeroth if this is your first time playing the game. I believe they kind of force you to do that so that you know what story, yeah, what the sense. story is going into Shadowlands. Um, mm. So if this is your first time playing, you are going to have to do that if you've played before then you won't. You can pick whichever one you want to go through. And then, of course, 50 through 60 will be Shadowlands whenever that's released. Um, and again, mm -hmm. I'm thinking November, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. So yeah, there was, were some confirmations that are pretty Yeah, that's neat. a very the very good point about the fact that when this, this pre-launch comes out before Shadowlands, you're going to get level switched. Yes. That's interesting. So, yeah. So, yeah, Luther was saying that taking you playing two MMOs is brave. Yes. I also said it's about time they start updating the starting zones. They haven't messed with those since Kata just quite a while ago. Now, Colby happens to think that Draenor wasn't that bad. And of course, Thicker says the first horde zone in Draenor is a nightmare without flying. I didn't yeah. think I played Draenor, so I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, you know, and Kickstand says Wad wasn't that bad. And I, I am exaggerating a little bit. I, I did not hate the expansion. Um, I didn't love it either. It was kind of a middle ground kind of thing for me but um yeah i i love what they've done with leveling and i think it's going to be a lot easier to get new players to come to the game now um, most i've said it before on the show that most of the people i try to get to play the game they go oh what's the max level i say 120 and they go "Ooh," yeah, no. and it's been out for 15 years and yep. all these expansions and even today um, I had Mario and some other guys that were asking to see the map of the game, and I was showing the maps, and they were like, oh, whoa, that's a lot. 
and you know it took a lot of like encouragement to get them even thinking about right. subbing to the I game um but i i think um the changes that blizzard activision have made i, I hate adding activision on there guys but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the changes that they've made for leveling, I think, are are excellent. And uh, like I said, I on the PTR, I was able to play through that new one to ten starting zone, and it's such a, a way light years better experience learning the game. So uh, that's all I had for this week. Man. There you go, guys. You've been delivered the goods on Shadowlands from Jazil himself. So there you go, uh, Solomon. What do you got? What's in your delivery plate today? Uh, let's see. First one I want to mention is that there's a new MMO coming out called Existence. But Existence. it's not a AAA MMO. Uh, matter of fact, it's not even done by any big corporation or company. It's being developed by two a team of two brothers. Uh, yeah. It's a passion project. Yeah, it's very... Um, uh, it's crude, to say the least. But then again, the game's only been in development for four months. They just launched their Patreon, I believe, two days ago uh, to um, uh, that you could pitch in to help for further development of the game. Essentially, from what I read, a, they were making the game because they wanted to capture the essence of what made an MMO. The Or, hang on, let me rephrase that. Essentially, they wanted to make this game because they wanted to go back and capture the, the essence, the heart of an MMO, which is to, you know, create content without having, you know, free-to-play um, items. Uh, or cash shops and, and stuff like that and having a subscription oh. but not uh, okay. affording any advantages to any one particular player over another and stuff like that which is fine and dandy i could definitely get behind that uh, mission statement mm. uh but as for the game itself it's very hard to really judge it i guess you could say because it's yeah. so it, it, it's so, so new. new yeah it's not yeah. even alpha i would I, whatever footage that they showed i would actually consider that pre-alpha because uh, again and that's not to say that these type of projects don't can't be successful because uh, stardew valley is a game created by one person and True. even though it's not an mmo there are some online aspects to it uh but it's become in, in immensely successful with like like 10 million downloads or, or close to that number if i'm not mistaken so but then again, you know, there I'm compa comparing apples to oranges, obviously, because Stardew Valley is a completely different animal um, compared to what these uh, brothers are trying to create. So I wish them luck. I'll, I'm definitely going to be covering it as much as I can, because I think a lot of uh, MMOs are going towards that route. A lot of indie developers making games, uh, particularly MMOs, is definitely a thing. And I think we've been seeing that certainly with crowdfunded games on Kickstarter, uh, regardless of whether if it's a passion project or if that's actually being developed by former members of a particular company you know or ex-employees of whatever you know triple a development right. team so uh there's that there's also the fact that we might be actually getting lost arc here on the western shores because amazon games has gotten in partnership with uh smile smilegate smilegate games and i believe they are a yeah they're a korean company uh not one of the bigger ones but uh, the game that i play from them a lot almost almost on a daily basis is a uh, epic seven but that's a mobile title and it, it's a pretty good uh, mobile title uh which you won't hear me say uh very often um <laughs> but uh, yeah they've um they've said that they're going to go into partnership in 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 um in publishing games from Sm uh, smilegate but uh yeah i think i think we could easily assume that Amazon Games is going to be the publishers for Lost Ark if uh, if this is something that you're interested in. Me personally, um, I'm still interested in playing Lost Ark, but you know the game has been in development. It has been out in Korea for like what two to three years now already. So I'm kind of like, yep. eh, you know, whatever. But if it comes out, it comes out. I'll still play it. But uh, I'm not as hyped as I once was. Uh, you know, two years ago. Um, mm. And uh, oh yeah, if you're into sci-fi games. Uh, cer uh, certain um, MMOs that take on a f um, so what was the word am I looking for? Similar form to like uh, No Man's Sky. There's another MMO called Vendetta Online that looks very similar okay. to it, and that went free to play uh, over the weekend or, or about a week ago or something like that. Um, it's uh, it's a fairly older MMO. I think it came out back in 2000. I want to say 2003, but if that's if it wasn't 2003, it's somewhere you know around that area 
Um, so it's a fairly older MMO, but I mean, for what it's worth, I think it aged a lot better than other older MMO titles. Say, for example, uh, Anarchy Online. Yeah. Oh, 2004. Yeah, there you go. So in my opinion, it aged better than other MMOs. Uh, but uh, if this is if you're into sci-fi MMORPGs and you want to give it a try, then you have your oh. option to do so now. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much it, okay. really. So Lurker is saying, please let Lost Ark be good since Amazon, Game, Amazon Games has lately been a dumpster fire. So I'm skeptical, but I'm hopeful for Lost Ark. It's like we're hopeful for New World. Right. You know, that's the thing about delaying it for a year. Yeah. The article uh, that I read it from where it was speculating that the reason why Amazon Game is doing this is because they either have a really bad reputation or no reputation because they released uh, The Crucible and they unreleased that because it turned out to be something that they weren't really ready for uh, to, to be released. And so, you know, that kind of gave us, you know, a, a, a sort of negative reputation for, for a lot of people. But then there's also New World that kept that kept on being delayed. And I believe Amazon Game actually made a racing game too, like a car racing game. But I have no idea if that's even true. And even if it is, I don't even know the name of the title of that racing game. So they need to build their reputation and their credibility up. And I think this is right. a really smart way of doing it. Well, oh, that's why Crucible, like the you know, like Crucible was bad. I mean, they it was the only thing that they got. They they announced, they released it, it crashed and burned. They brought it back. It was re revamp it like. Why'd you guys do that? I mean, I know that they wanted something, something to show something, it seemed like. Just a, a feeling they're actually committed and actually actual legitimate games to do. I mean, I don't know if they did that because they knew the Amazon, well, that, that the New World was going to be delayed further. I mean, the New World, at the time they did that, Crucible had been delayed to August, if I recall, the time the timeline for this. So it makes you wonder if they had winds of other stuff, like, well, we got to put it out here so people will see that we're doing something. I don't know. Your, your reputation is 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 based on that. But then again, Amazon Game Studios has an Amazon behind it. So we'll see. Him. Right. All right. We've been delivered by Solomon. Really good stuff there. One thing I like about what you watch when you watch Solomon's shows on YouTube is you find out about all these other games that you may not have heard about. You hear a lot from me about the big name games, AAA games, but the small ones, Solomon's your guy because he knows all that's going on. Well, even Jaziel. Jaziel is on top of things too. Hey, Ichi, how's it going? All right. So um, thank you for that. Now, storyline, quest, lore, what we talk about. This is where opinions come in. I heard this on, uh, I think it was on Massive EOP's podcast. And it's like, good ideas come from there some places. And I was thinking about music. And they were talking about, I forget what game we're talking about, okay? The music was, you know, and it reminded me of the fact that um, music draws me into a game. It keeps me into a game. It also can push me away. So first, I wanted a couple of questions. Like one, is music in a MMO needed? Okay, really, you know, and is in you know, is it inspirational or not? I mean, does it inspire you? And if you can think about, it, what's the best score you can think of? Now I know Lurker will put in here Final Fantasy fourteen. So I'm assuming that. Okay, one of the reasons why I loved ESO is the fact that it had a, a score that I thought was really commanding. You know, um, I liked uh, even Swotor had. Because it's it's Star Wars kind of music, okay? not totally right, but I mean, even WoW has more at times more for for me, okay. But so, so I'm gonna go with you first, you know. Music in MMOs is it neither or not inspiration or not, and what's the best score you can think of? I think music <laughs> is definitely needed, regardless of what genre you're talking about. But it's a little trickier, it's a little finicky on MMOs, in my opinion, because. Uh, Actually, no, I shouldn't say that. No, I take that back. I take that back. Um, no, music is, is definitely absolutely a part of any, you know, an MMO, but any game that you play, uh, name a game that's memorable that doesn't have a game. Even Tetris had games and you're playing, you know, you're flipping around stuff. That's right. Did yeah. Song. And, now, and now that song is going to be stuck in your head <laughs> because Thank you. it's on repeat over and over again. Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Again, like I can't think of a game that didn't have music, even if it was crummy, you know, 8 bit music from, you know, the NES or uh, the Nintendo era games. Right. Um, but I will admit in terms of recent games, I can't really think of anything that comes to mind because I think a lot of the reasons why we have nostalgia is because 
you know, when you're younger uh, or not even younger, but if you're experiencing like a different genre or a different type of game and certainly MMOs was that during the early 2000s, you're more inclined to have a, a stronger sense of those type of experiences, in my opinion. And so that's why I think music definitely goes along with those memories and, and, and is a lot more memorable because, you know, to, 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 kind of, to kind of digress a little bit, there was that symphony that went around that only played gaming music, you know, by, oh right uh, I think it was called play or something like, or let's play or something play. I can't remember, but you'll notice that a lot of their tracks, or at least from what I've seen or what I can remember, there were the, the tracks were mainly from older games, you know, like Final Fantasy seven was like the biggest one. And and I, I don't think that's by accident because a lot of these games that we grew up on playing are memorable because of the fact that we get a sense of nostalgia and music plays a big part of that. Now, with the newer generation, you know, with Generation Z, you know, now they're getting their hands on games, too, and whatever game that they play. Uh, so the, the game that kind of define our generation, in my opinion, would be like World of Warcraft, for example. The game that defines their generation is going to be Fortnite. And... <laughs> So all the yeah right. So all the music that you hear from the Fortnite games, you know, whether you're playing battle royale or party uh, party mode or whatever, you know, those are the ones that are going to be sticking to their minds and games uh, of that nature. So, um, so yeah, I I in, so in terms of uh, the third part of that question, what memories do I have? What music do I remember from the games that I've played? They're all older games that I played in my early twenties, like Guild Wars One, uh, even World of Warcraft, um, you know, Star Wars: Old Republic Two, more or less, because like you said, it it is star wars but you're getting that nostalgia not because of the game but because of the franchise itself that came out you know during the late 1970s right, right? so there's so you know there's a combination of that aspect as well too um you know and obviously if i if i had to think of non mmos you know definitely the final fantasy series uh seven and eight but eight in particular uh eight's my fa uh, favorite uh, entry in the series uh there's also you know like age of empires and um Oh goodness! Mm. Like you know, yeah. So so there, there's a bunch out there that I could think of, but yeah. But in terms of like newer games, like anything that came out like in the past like five years, I, I mean, nothing really comes to mind. Like in terms of music, yeah. though, you know, in terms of gameplay, in terms of like actual storylines, like I could think of a few. But in terms of music, like I'm thinking of a game right now that really blew my mind, which was um, Call of Duty, the first modern warfare game like going out of the choppers and stuff like that. And just, it was, it was such a memorable game, memorable game, but I can't remember the music. I really can't. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny as um, I could, you know, like Lurker was like, couldn't type faster than can't and bad mouthing me. So I, I don't have a problem with final fantasy music. Final fantasy 14, because um, I went to a symphony. I got offered a ticket. Someone couldn't go. So I went to symphony. I was, it was music was beautiful. It was great. I was really impressed. Okay. Just I had this. My problem with Final Fantasy XIV was that the first opening menu is like someone playing scales. It's like I call it flighty, going up and down the scales. You know, versus like the opening, the the sound you get from World of Warcraft. You know, that is like just you know that opening. That's memorable. What's going to ruin my whole discussion here is the fact that I now I can't tell. Even though I like the Elder Scrolls music, it is right now not memorable. Mm. It is not in my head. I can remember Final Fantasy fourteen. I can remember World of Warcraft, but I can't remember the ESO. But Final Fantasy fourteen creator creates new tracks for every boss, and each one is, is a banger. WoW has had the best in-game music of any game I play. WoW's okay. Okay, so um, so Azil, you are a music person. I mean, you mm. you do music on the side, but even though I, one of the questions I'm going to have later on is about how much this music if it's in your wheelhouse, okay. But uh, what about you? Music and MMOs. Yeah. Here. <laughs> Sorry, hand in the dog. Okay. Off, I guess. Um. I I love music and games. Um, and actually, up till this year, because of what's going on, we haven't been able to do it. Um, UCLA has. Uh, their orchestra every year does a um, usually it's like a weekend thing where they do game music and it's just awesome being there live and listening to uh, not only the new stuff but like Solomon was saying the the older games that we like Final Fantasy 7 is a, is a 
that's massively popular and everybody's always shouting out for that. <laughs> um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really good music out there. And of course, with me being more of an MMO guy, that's, um, what I'm most familiar with as far as, um, uh, uh, like Jason Hayes and Glenn Stafford, uh, Derek Duke, they're they're all they've done uh, stuff for World of Warcraft. Um, David Arkenstone is another one. Um, I'm I'm probably looking really super nerdy that I know all these guys, <laughs> composers yeah. and and whatnot. But um, I love uh, World of Warcraft stuff um, for for one thing. It was like you were saying. I do I also do really love um elder scrolls online's um we'll call them soundtracks <laughs> um because it just this is going to sound weird but it really helps to build the atmosphere and you it blends in i think so much better than the other mmos that you almost I think the reason that you're kind of forgetting them until you hear a part of the medley or the, the tune um, is because it just kind of blends with the atmosphere so well that you almost don't notice that there's music playing along with True. the ambient noise yeah. and it all plays in. You've got birds chirping and howling monkeys in the background, whatever, uh, you know, going on along with the music and it's just so subtle and it's just blends in there so perfectly. Whereas with world of Warcraft, I, I do remember like I can hear five seconds of a tavern song and tell you, Oh, that's the lion's in, or, uh, that's the Goldshire in. I like can tell you where that music is from. I can tell you what zone it's in or whatnot. Um, and so it's like, it's a little bit of a different experience, I think, between those two games. And I actually um, have listened to, like, I, I am a big Final Fantasy fan. I just don't really, I've never really cared for the MMO. But the music from the MMO, I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, I personally, uh, again, it's just an opinion, uh, but I, I like Elder Scrolls music, I think, better. I tend to listen to the Elder Scrolls music far more often than going to the World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy or the other games. Um, even Guild Wars 2 um, isn't bad, but I wouldn't, you know, as far as the, the ones that I, the soundtracks that I tend to listen to the most, Elder Scrolls, play, I I probably listen to at least four or five of the songs uh every day N no joke because <laughs> they're just mm. really really well done and they are just uh, this almost sounds like an insult but it's not it's just great music to just chill out to and you could to study to or um if you're just you know having a rough day and you just want to kind of lay down on the bed or the couch and, and turn on some music. Uh, Elder Scrolls um, music is soundtracks do that for me. Um, especially like the Brad Derrick stuff, um, which I think he's done most of their Corny stuff. Amazon. Actually, but, See a yeah. list here, his stuff. Morrowind. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Brad Derrick Brad is, Derrick. is just awesome, dude. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. I I it I definitely feel like it in MMOs it's part of the atmosphere and it needs to be there. And I, while I do feel like some MMOs have definitely done it way better than others, um it it is something that I remember and I just uh, it's funny that this was brought up as a topic because just for well, I think it's 3 or 4 days ago I was just doing my normal uh, real late at night, was going through YouTube, and I saw something pop up on the sidebar that was music from EverQuest. And I went back, I, I clicked on just the introduction when you're loading into the game and played that introduction song. And it just brought back this flood of, yeah. of great memories, you know. And uh, 
the the funny thing is the there were three different versions of that intro song and the first one from 1999 was almost a midi music it, they didn't even have an orchestra at that point <laughs> um they did go back and redo it twice um and they ended up the third time was an or a live orchestra that they utilized which was awesome but it yeah it connects to your memories in it and it does uh bring the the game um it, it livens it up you know that's for sure i mean yeah. um i keep thinking about the games we play especially when you're in a game for so long you have you, the the music can be to a point where it's so annoying you just want to turn it off and you're like you have a bad memory or the first like you said the environment is there and like the, it, it, it triggers the memories like i said i can listen to the world of warcraft opening sound right like it just remembers reminds me of different things you know like liquor says show me an alliance player that won't try and sing along to the Stormwind soundtrack you know and of course shadow says the best in-game soundtrack is doom eternal i think i've already heard that one okay mm -hmm. um kenneth have you listened to the intro music to doc recently i bet that's what i was look looking up right now uh lurker was seeing if Doctor camelot is on my amazon i want to go i want to do that i want to remember those music too you're right that's what it probably will elicit a bunch of emotions for me for sure in that new mutant trailer, though, what? Why are we going to new mutants trailer? This is not. This is not about Marvel, okay? Oh my word, okay. Uh, what are we doing here, okay? Colby is t kicking us somewhere else, okay? <laughs> yeah. But the, the the reason why I mean, obviously, I heard that the mention on Massive OP podcast. But when you were playing a game like these MMOs, you're in it a long time, and you're hearing the music over and over again. It has to be something that is not going to make you so want to turn it off okay just literally right. just want to turn the music off and say i screw this okay um it goes along with it i mean as i said i i, I said i understand where i'm at a different spot with final fantasy 14 and others and there are people who just love them all the music of final fantasy and final fantasy 14 has a wonderful soundtrack of you know and it just for me didn't hit me the same way mm -hmm. as say playing elder scrolls online or even rift or um uh, like World of Warcraft, okay. Um, the question I also have was that do you what's missing? Because I was thinking about the fact that you both of you like uh, heavy metal, maybe mm -hmm. even brutal metal, okay. And I was thinking, you know, that's missing. Isn't isn't your favorite type of music missing <laughs> from these MMOs? Either one of you. I mean, I guess that's why you would listen to the Doom Eternal soundtrack. Uh, oh, okay. Also, uh, the another soundtrack again, not an MMO. It is a multiplayer co-op game, but um, Killing Floor Two um, has nothing but metal uh, soundtrack, and it is awesome. Also, it has a whole bunch of uh, Christian artists on there, so that bangs it up even bigger for me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but like as far as an play. MMO, I don't. Yeah, there's no MMO that I've ever played that had metal on it. That'd be really cool. Yeah. That's <laughs> you, Solomon. Are you missing any music <gasps> off the? Wait, game? I'm wrong. Oh. Dark Moon Fair. Uh, they were called the Elite Chieftains. Uh, EC ECT, I think, was the name of the band. They actually played at. Um, BlizzCon, I, I'm not going to remember the year, so we'll just go on from there. But uh, if you go to the Dark Moon Fair, every hour they have a band down at, if you go down to the end, like you're going to go to the dock, um, there is a stage there and there's a metal band that plays um, a song there. There's also a hidden area in a cave that is a heavy metal band that there's a little event that you do. Um, so actually, I was wrong. There are metal songs in World of Warcraft. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, Solomon, missing any music here that's not there you wanted to have? No, not really. I mean, nothing really comes to mind. When it comes to me musical taste, I'm not that fastidious. I I like them all really, um, and it depends on what game that I'm playing to. Uh, the game that I actually left out and I completely forgot about, but I'm kind of cheating when I say this is 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 the Fallout series. Because they use a lot of uh, old, oh right, old music, yeah, exactly right. But but then again, you know, it's just kind of like 
like like a uh, guitar hero and those other rhythm games it's like i wouldn't have listened to those music or as much yeah. as i would if it weren't for those games and so you know there's there's and that's kind of a different topic of an uh, of in itself you know right. when the music makes the games instead of the games making the music so um yeah but in terms of like actual like type of music i want to hear i mean i don't really care either way if i just want to listen to music i'll just listen to music it doesn't have to be in a game <laughs> fair enough i want to see i looked at the dark, uh, dark age of camelot music and it's the main title song i got commercial first oh my word i hate commercial well of course they're <laughs> fine but get the ad here we go oh my word it just did trigger oh my word Dad had a moment. He did. Oh my goodness! Can What's you guys that? hear that or not? No the stream can. I don't think. Yeah. All right, Looker, you're right. Oh my goodness! Another reason why I think I like those kind of music versus the different kind of opening from Final Fantasy XIV. Okay. <laughs> Looker says the Murloc song gets stuck in his head. <laughs> you know. So yeah. All right. That it, music. I mean, music is that. I mean, smells trigger us in life here okay that's why that's whenever true. someone smokes a cigarette it'll trigger a memory because i have memories of good memories of being in places where people were smoking and so it triggers memories for us in games if we're not it's because no smells it's also a triggering is the it's the music and that triggers the memories the good memory the bad memories okay i mean just now listening to Dark of the camilla how many times i heard that song opening up because back in the day when you didn't have internet, I mean, the uh, uh, broadband, you had more like a dial-up or um, the um, uh, DSL. You spent a lot more time listening to that music over and over and over again until it finally loads in to the screen. <laughs> oh, but yeah, wow. Okay, that was interesting. Thank you, uh, Lurker, for reminding me of that. All right, that was our sort of quest. So Escort Quest, we are going to lead you to safety, XP, and Adventure of the Lifetime, which is because coming up, Here's some more online virtual stuff. Yes, GamesCon is next weekend, 27th through the 30th. So don't forget to watch online. I will see what I can do, even though I'll be away. And then following that, middle of, of uh, September, will be PAX Online. I will be back in the state, and I'm taking the, that week off from vacation to do stuff, you know, uh, to watch the online. I'm waiting for the actual panel list to see what I'm going to do, see how I'm going to watch it or, or stream it or whatever it is. So. Check it out, okay. So, um, the last thing I, I don't have any quest quests. I can think of anything. Is a world event again? Like I said, this is the reason why we are doing new world stuff. Because come, sorry, hang on, man. Crud. <laughs> a beard. It's harder to get it on, you know. I don't think that's right. Is that crooked or something? Yeah, it is. It's way crooked. You're supposed to have the nose part on your nose. I know. Well, it's not, though. It's bothering my OCD. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, Anyways. All that. I told you it was wrong. After all that. Yeah, well. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah. He's still got it crooked. Where'd you know that? That's the thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, goodness. I can't really tell. I can. Imagine living with him. <laughs> hmm. Anyways. I... Yes, I can. August 25th, <laughs> August 25th, on a screen there, I'm going to block Jaziel's face a little bit. August 25th, I'll put it in the middle between, no, that's a face. No, uh, yeah, August 25th, Train MMO show, we're doing a live viewing party, talk about the show first, and then at seven at 6 p.m. Pacific, at 7 p.m. Pacific, we're going to be playing the game. So join us, you can be there with us, enjoying the hijinks, hilarity, and other stuff that goes along with watching the Trinity Bros, so... Uh, check us out. We'll be streaming it on all of our all the major platforms. Not really, just Twitch. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, also coming up, we haven't planned out yet. Out yet, 
Uh, probably going to be more about when I get back from vacation, our triumphant return back into World of Warcraft, even though someone already returned. So, hmm. <laughs> so it'll be triumphant <laughs> with me, I guess. But it'll be a little, a little post climatic for Jazzy. Okay, so yeah, he's already leveling up. He's been hanging out with. <laughs> Good thing that Raina and Yiva aren't here, okay? The crazy sisters, no, they're they're great. They're great to hang out with, okay? So, I mean, apparently, if you go watch their tweets, or twi- tweets, right, they they sang Jazil a good night song when he went to bed. And I'm like, wait a minute, that night, I went to bed early, I should have asked for a song first, okay? But anyways, yeah, um, so they're hanging out, but they're also East Coast, they're Eastern Time Zone, doing, doing their shows at midnight, no, 9 p.m., Pacific, which is midnight for them. Wow. wow. Okay, so, anyways, um, di- uh, diminished expectations of the guild. I'll be hanging out with them. So, there you go. Um, that's all we had for those kind of things. So, more coming in that regards. Um, back to our list here. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. So, join us for next week. So, our dailies are done. The latest quest lines are complete. The judges are looted. So it's time to go AFK. And if you haven't already, your bio break. So where can we find you? And what MMOs are you playing recently, Sir Jazil? Uh, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter and Discord, basically, at Sir Jazil, one word. I am right now playing Elder Scrolls Online and World of Warcraft. And that is it, because if I add anything else to that, uh yeah, I don't think that's possible. It's not enough hours okay. in the day. <laughs> not enough hours in a day. So apparently, Kobe wants to point out the fact that he's been tanking for you guys. So, yep, I've been tanking for them the last couple of weeks. So Kobe's there too. Try so doesn't mean to forget you, Kobe. All right, Sullivan, where can we find you? And what have you been playing? Uh, it's been the same since we started this podcast. <laughs> BDO. Hmm. Yeah, BDO. I haven't really been playing Star Wars or Old Republic that much anymore. Um, yeah, just just BDO, really, until uh, the New World comes out. Or not comes out. Well, that, well, when it comes out, but I am I mean, what uh, for next week. And, uh, yeah, um, you know, we'll be getting into Shadow, Shadow, Shadowlands 2 as well. Uh, just because, you know, I mean, if you're going to run an MMO ch- channel, you kind of be shooting yourselves in the foot if you didn't so uh yeah other than that oh find me on youtube coffee and rpgs uh i explained that i i created a second channel but uh you know that's m- more of a passion project more of something that uh i'll do when i have time but uh, yeah just coffee and rpgs on youtube and uh here on twitch on uh solomon underscore sk awesome looker says bdo is a job so it makes sense he's still playing <laughs> i'm playing right now actually <laughs> yeah, right now while he's streaming. So, yep. All right, you can find me here on this channel, Kenneth. And you know, if you're list- watching my channel, if you're not, it's so much channel. I'm Kenneth and Kenneth and Live, my Twitter handle. I do have a YouTube channel, Kenneth and 64, even though I don't, I think I post some more videos there. But, and I have been playing Elder Scrolls Online, and uh, I, will be, I will be shortly joining in the New World hype and then back into WoW. Um, I do want to level my ESO character to 50 at least, start joining the guild to do some, some trials I never tried before. So I might be doing the same thing, having two uh, two accounts, or two, sorry, two games at the same time. The biggest thing I have also is I also play other games, like my Train Thursday, and I've been playing Valorant. I played, on Thursday, I played a board game with uh, By Train and uh, Shadow. You know, it was a Marvel board game, Marvel a Champions board game. I'm like, so I'm a variety guy, so you can find me doing different things. But I know I like, like Jaziel, I see, I tend to be the person people come to when it comes to watching certain games and not all games. Valorant is not the game to watch for me. It's hard to watch chat. So anyway, that's all for our show tonight. Time to uh, go fishing. <laughs> and we will be back next week for another episode. Assuming we do it right, because I will be on the road. So we're going to talk, talk about uh, how we're going to do this. But join us next week, every Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific time for the Trinity of Mo show. And that's a wrap. Welcome to the Trinity MMO Show. Thank you everyone for joining us on for some good old MMO news each week at 6 p.m. If we're on time, Pacific time, 
on the Coffee and RPG Networks. As always, we have Sir Jaziel in the house. Hello. Wait, wait, you didn't do the He is Risen thing. Oh, startle. <laughs> you, you, gotta cut it. you gotta cut it again, Dad. <laughs> We we need the the I'm gonna make us one okay. Oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> Just add it in post. Let's go. Wait 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 wait. <laughs> oh my goodness. He is oh. risen. He's risen indeed. <laughs> Welcome to the Twitch <laughs> MMO show. The third or fourth take, or was it six seven take? 